everybody, it's a mailbag. I have some items that I genuinely have no idea what they are. Um, so we're gonna open them up and find out. This. Oh, cool. Okay, wow, I slipped the bag. Um, this is very cool. All right, this is made for an arcade. And it is an EGA, a CGA EGA YUV to VGA converter. This thing is made for an arcade and you can see you've got a VGA port on this side and a VGA port on this side and some common, uh, you know, what are they called? YUV, um, connectors here. And then you've got these random little headers around here. Now the idea with these is a lot of the arcade machines were based on the CGA standard. So the color graphics array, which if I remember correctly, so that would have been the IBM PC and they had a 16 color palette and could display four on the screen at the same time. And then there was EGA that had a bigger, probably 256 color palette could do 16 colors on the screen at the same time. And they are in no way compatible with VGA. You can't just do a normal adapter. Um, and there are some devices that are fairly expensive. Like you're, you're talking about like 70 to a hundred dollars, um, shipped that will do the conversion. They're based on FPGAs and all that stuff. But then this thing is really common. It's just for arcade machines. And as you can see, there's no, uh, if you're familiar with CGA and EGA, they both use nine pin, uh, they look like serial port adapters. And so uh, what I was wondering, and I hope I don't blow anything up, is I'm going to see if I can use this thing uh, to build some kind of like nine pin connector somewhere for this board and see if I can use it to hook a normal like IBM computer up to a VGA monitor. Um, now, why would I care about that? And I'm not going to bore you guys with a lot of details, but the old EGA and CGA monitors are really hard to come by now. A lot of times they're full of dust. They had vents on top. So what would happen was all the dust would settle just straight down into the actual uh, monitor itself. And so they would overheat and capacitors would blow and all that kind of stuff. So I want to see if I can make a cheaper uh, CGA to VGA adapter. And this thing was 20 two ish bucks, 25 tops. So I'm going to see if I can make something cool out of this. If I can, you better believe I'm going to make a video. So this is the adapter and the cable. Uh, let's grab this one because I'm wondering about this. Ah, yes. Okay. So this is a Lutron smart switch. And one of the things I'm doing at my house is I'm completely isolating my business network from my house network. And that allows me to put some questionable things on the network. Um, now this is a, a big company. Lutron is probably one of the biggest uh, receptacle manufacturers, at least in America. And um, the problem I have is in my wife's craft room, there should have been something else in this kit, I think. Oh, there it is. Uh, in my wife's craft room, there is a closet and, um, that closet is, well, it's bent. Uh, that closet is accessible from both sides, but there's only one light switch and the one light switch does all three lights. So what I'm going to basically do is do a little bit of rewiring to where this will be able to turn on just the closet light. And then when she comes from the other side, she'll be able to use this little remote control, which we're going to take a look at here. Maybe I'll actually show you this in the video, but, um, this little remote control will act as a switch in the other door so that she can turn the light on as if there was an actual switch there. They had, uh, the people before me had done some poor three way switch wiring and it just didn't actually work. Uh, and there's no way to actually fix it without running a whole bunch more wiring in a really bad spot. So instead, I'm going to go with this Lutron smart switch. Now, this was about $60. Uh, I'm a little upset it's kind of bent down here. It'll go back together, but it's just annoying. Uh, and for $60, I got this and the actual remote for it. So she's going to be excited uh, that she is going to have a cool new switch for her craft room. Next up, this feels computer cable-y, and I have ordered a few computer cable type things lately. Uh, 
Oh yeah. Okay. Now this hurt me a little bit. Um, let me get this out of the way here. These cables are becoming harder and harder to find. The floppy cables that actually have um, the card edge connector on them uh, for five and a quarter inch floppies. And hopefully one day I'm going to do a video on five and a quarter inch floppies. I have repaired a couple of them and um, a couple of the drives. And, you know, I believe that we should save at least some of this kind of stuff because they're not making five and a quarter inch floppies anymore. And there's no real good way to make a USB five and a quarter inch floppy. And there is a lot of data on five and a quarter inch discs that, you know, some of it may still work. And if it can be accessed, I'd love to be able to access it. So I did uh, spring for two of these cables and um, they were expensive. They were like nine bucks a piece, uh, which I mean, I can't tell you how many of these cables I've thrown out um, in my life, but um, you know, I don't have many anymore. And so I wanted some known good ones. And so the idea is your A drive was actually over here and they had the brilliant concept at IBM to flip this thing. And that's actually how it knows which one is the A drive and which one is the B drive. So A drive, B drive, and uh, this cable, some of them would only have one kind of connector, but this one had uh, both the three and a half and the five and a quarter inch floppy in both positions. As you can see, I got them in two different lengths. Next up is another package that I am very excited about. And I know what this is because it says it on the other side of the label. This is, doo -doo -doo -doo. I've got my discord beeping over there. Um, this is, The Dr. Duino. Make sure I got everything out of the package. This is the Dr. Duino PCB, and it is a starter kit that you actually assemble yourself. And so um, they have given me one for the kit of the year competition, and we are going to take a look at it separately. But the quick version of it, it's got a nano, it's got all your typical sensors and things like that, plus a little screen and uh, and all this stuff. And this kit needs to be soldered, uh, resistors and all. And so I am going to give you the full experience of building and using the Dr. Duino as part of the kit of the year thing. And I will also do a separate video on this thing. So this is a 4K HDMI USB KVM switch four by one. And so uh, the idea is that you can take four uh, HDMI computers and hook them up to one HDMI monitor. And then same thing with the USB. You can take four USB devices and they will go to all four PCs. So I can have a keyboard, a mouse, a joystick, and maybe even a thumb drive and have it go to all four computers that are hooked up to it. And this is for my mission control, which is over there. So the story is I had my actual server up on top of the mission control and that was powering a lot of the stuff. And I decided that uh, I don't want to do that because every once in a while I put some sketchy software on that thing. Um, and so I decided what I'm going to do is I have a second um, server that I'm going to put over there. So I'm going to run Windows 7 and not connected to the internet on the mission control thing. So I can play a little bit of retro stuff on there. I'll have a Windows 7 machine in case I need one. And then, um, you know, they will all, uh, some other PCs and Raspberry Pis and all that kind of stuff can be hooked to this thing. And it has a little control box, which I may be taking this apart. We'll see. Um, you know, mission control has kind of a nice aesthetic to it. So I don't know if I'm going to stick this on the outside, but what I may do is take this apart. And the idea is that this one, um, this little box here will decide which computer and mouse and monitor are all being connected together. And so what I think I'm going to do is take this thing apart and turn it into one of those little panels for mission control. Next up, we've got one where they put my address on both sides. So, uh, can I, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, I made a mess. Okay, there we go. 
this is one of the entrants to the kit of the year competition and there's a theme this year where the new entrants are these cool single board things that you guys know i like and this is uh it's got an arduino it has an rfid some dip switches uh what is that right there joystick and all that kind of stuff and so it is a single board one let me see I am not going to unbox this thing at the moment. I want to give it its own video where I look at it and experience it for the first time on video so I can give you my reactions as I'm seeing them. But uh, this thing looks like it's got some promise. It's simple, but you know I like these all-in-one kits to kind of isolate the idea of wiring from the electronics coding and components. Next up, we have another one that I had to take out of the box, but I have not opened it. This is the uh, barcode scanner, and it is the Scan Avenger designed in Australia. I wonder if Dave Jones had anything to do with that. Um, this is a normal barcode scanner as well as a QR code scanner. And this one has a few special properties um, in terms of the way it can connect together. And so we're going to just pull it out for a second. Ah, there we go. Oh, fancy. Uh, so it's got the dongle. I do not want to lose that. But this thing can be connected via USB or can run uh, cordlessly. I believe it also can be charged. Oh, wow. Yep, can be charged via that thing. And the idea is that this thing can scan the uh, QR codes also. Now, for those of you who don't know about QR codes, I mean, you've all seen them, but the idea behind them is that they have a good bit of error correction built into the uh, to the barcode itself, which means you only need to scan a certain percentage of the barcode to actually get all of the information that's in there and there's error correction and things like that. So if a barcode is smudged, um, it can it can sort of make a best guess effort into uh, to knowing what the barcode was. And so I have this for an application where I need some high speed scanning. And uh, I need it to be extremely accurate. And I can't really get into that on this video, but um, this gives some options. So if you guys are interested in learning how to code with barcode scanners, I have a uh, an introduction to PHP course, and I, I do a few other things I think with Arduino, where um, I you know show you how to take these things and use them in your actual applications. So I'll link to that in the description and uh, give you a full review of this thing separately. So I went through that stuff relatively quickly and I thought I would show you a few other things I'm working on. This thing looks kind of beat up, but it is, let me get the cover off here. It is a Windows XP machine and uh, Part of what I want to know is if you guys want to see me do some live streaming. I know you probably don't care about this machine very much, but I thought maybe we could do some interactive talking. If you guys want to do some live streaming, I thought about maybe upgrading this PC, and I've got a couple of other ones laying around just uh, doing things that we could kind of talk while we're doing it. This is actually a Socket 754 motherboard for uh, AMD, and it has a Sempron 2500, which is not exciting at all. Um, I had actually built this system out of a Socket 939 motherboard with something like an Athlon 3200 plus, 3500 plus, but the problem was the floppy drive controller could only control one floppy, and it had to be a three and a half. It couldn't do a five and a quarter. In fact, here's that motherboard right now. It's an Enforce motherboard. And you might say, well, what the freak does that matter if it can do a five and a quarter? Well, the reason behind that is that in my office, I am setting up the ability to basically interface with any kind of peripheral uh, or drive that I come across. And so, um, you know, if, if I find some three and a half inch media, if I find some five and a quarter inch media, if I find a zip disc or jazz disc or whatever, I want to be able to read it or interface with it. And so the idea is that in my office, I am maintaining every kind of slot. So we have PCI slots, we have an AGP slot. This is the same exact thing. It's just this floppy controller only works with uh, three and a half inch drives. So I'm going to set this one off to the side. Now you'll notice... <clears throat> You'll notice on the back, this motherboard has PS2 keyboard and mouse, has standard 9-pin serial parallel port, um, built-in VGA, which we're going to take care of that, some USB, Ethernet, and sound. Um, but what really matters with this one 
is what's on the front. So as you can see here, we have a Zip 250 drive, which if you've never used Zip, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, we have your standard three and a half inch high density floppy. Um, this is an older drive. I have a brand new one somewhere around. This is a new old stock, which is very, very hard to come by. Uh, five and a quarter inch high density drive. And then just to keep the aesthetic tan, I have this slot loading DVD ROM drive here to install some software. And like I said, this one is going to be running XP. Now there are a lot of things I can virtualize on XP, but it's really hard to virtualize a zip drive. So for those of you who have uh, never experienced the click of death of, an, of a zip disk, uh, these are zip disks. And so let's open one up here. And these hold 250 megs per disk. Um, let me see, I've got a floppy here too. So uh, compared to your standard floppy, they're almost the same size, except you've got 1.44 megs and 250 megs. Now there's also a version of this that's 100 meg, and the drive I have can read that. There's also a very rare 750 meg version of this um, that my drive cannot read that. So the idea is the 750 can read the 250 and the 100, but the 250 obviously can't read the 750. So um, this is the zip disk and the drive works and the disks work, all four of these work. Um, I'm obviously not gonna be using these for storing very much stuff, but the idea is occasionally, in the course of my work, I come across a zip disk and I wanna be able to read it. I've been meaning to make a video about a computer I've got over there called Project Legacy, but it has another one of these boards. Uh, this is a new old stock um, slot one board, which was one of my least favorite platforms. But the idea is this one motherboard has a serial parallel uh, game port for joysticks has ISA slots, PCI slots. It also has ATX power, which is amazing because uh, AT power supplies, the older style power supplies are going away real quick. And so the idea that you can plug in your traditional brand new um, ATX power supply, and now there's some negative five volt issues we can talk about later, but uh, this one runs at I believe 233 megahertz. And so this is enough to basically run everything down to from Windows 2 up to Millennium, and it would run XP if I wanted it to, but not very well. Um, and I have 384 megs of RAM for this. So I have a whole nother one of these. This is a new old stock board, and I have two of them. These were never used, and so I've put them aside, and I am using them for legacy purposes in case I need to get something that's on an ISA card. Uh, and so we'll talk about that stuff later. I'm not trying to turn into LGR, but I do want to kind of show you some of the cool random things I'm working with. Uh, I've got a couple of other rando things here. Um, this is a jazz drive. I was just telling you about these. Uh, this is a remanufactured one, uh, external and that here. The jazz drive was real similar to the, uh, zip disk, except this one would hold one gigabyte. And uh, there's a cable around here somewhere for us. We've got a power supply and I've got a cable. Now you might recognize that is a weird cable and that is a uh, SCSI serial connector or something, serial interface, I don't know, uh, something like that. But the idea is that you could daisy chain seven drives together um, on each SCSI channel. And that was a big deal. As you can see here, each one of them has an ID. This is set up for four and somehow you can uh, raise or lower, I guess, by pushing in there uh, the ID. So each one needs to have a unique ID. Um, there are several flavors of SCSI, but I do have a controller. Uh, this is a PCI controller. As you can see, it has cache on it. And uh, so there's an internal and an external um, SCSI thing like that. And the idea was these were uh, able to run longer distances, able to run more drives. And this is a weird format, one gigabyte zip drive. I think they made a two gig one also, uh, maybe some other ones on top of that. But uh, at least right now, I think I paid like three bucks for this thing. I can read uh, zip disks if I come across them. And in this horrific box, I'm not actually sure if the card's in here at the moment, but this is the all in wonder 9800 Pro. Uh, the Radeon 9800 Pro was a high-end graphics card, and the all in wonder was um, 
a higher end version of that. I think these were like close to $300. I had several of these all in wonder series. And the idea was they had a dream of uh, being your home entertainment thing. And so I bought this. Yeah. Okay. There's a card in here. I bought this and it actually came with several of them. So this is an all in wonder AGP uh, rage 128. And then this one, which these are so rare. I never see these on eBay. I didn't like that, or very rarely. This is the uh, All in Wonder 9800 Pro. As you can see, these things can uh, can capture uh, your coax, which used to be on your TV. You can still use them to capture uh, antennas and things like that. Uh, it's got your standard DVI out, and then they had all these weird breakout things, and so uh, you could use them for composite and S video. You got a couple, got three of those. Uh, and then these other breakouts for, you know, other forms of composite and sound. I have all the software that came with it and more breakout cables. So the only thing this didn't come with was there was a remote, an RF remote that uh, didn't come in the box. But I paid $5 and I got these two graphics cards and one more AGP graphics card. And so uh, this is probably going in that XP machine that I just showed you. So, um... You know, hey, that was something back in the day. Anyway, that's what I have. I appreciate you guys indulging me. Let me know if you want to do some live stream chatting, just kind of talk about anything, sort of streams. Uh, if there's enough of that on YouTube and you don't need one more guy yapping at you, let me know about that too. So anyway, hey, have a great day. Thanks for watching.